Right, I'd like you to put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for our stalwart Marlene guest. Thank you, Marlene. When I joined the British National Party, I didn't realise I was joining a movement, because that's what it is, it's a political movement. And I don't do the things I do for political reasons the majority of the time. I do it because it's right. This old lady that I'm be, I've been helping, for five years to my knowledge, she's been intimidated by her Asian neighbours to sell her house and go. And that old lady said one thing to me, she said, I joined up in war, you know. She joined WAX, RAC, whatever it is, RAC, is it? And I thought, when this country needed her, she was there. And that's why it's payback time now, and we've got to be there for this old lady. And Nick Griffin, I rang him and I told him what were happening. And that man sent me the cost of the cameras. What we put up didn't work, it were crowbarred down. So I rang him again and he gave me some more money. And so we were able to put three cameras up and they've got somebody on film and we're waiting to go with the police to see who that is. But that poor old soul, she's had no argue for 12 days in this bit of cold weather because of something wrong with the chimney. And this is the second time she's had something pushed down the chimney. She's had her windows painted, she's had her windows put in. And I just feel so sorry for her, she's 84 years old. But it's the right thing to do. Labour don't want to do anything, they've done nothing for five years because it'll upset the Asian vote. And they said to me, you've publicised it and told everybody. And I said, well, when you don't tell anybody, like you did with grooming, you keep it quiet and you keep it under cover and nobody knows, it festers and it carries on. And I am not going to let it carry on. She's not the only one in that area that is being intimidated to get out of her house. There are four in that area. And why should they? And I have been spoken to by the two Asian neighbours on either side. It's absolutely appalling. And from our own, I've gone to various agencies in the town and I've got, I'm not having this conversation with you. Now, if it had been the indigenous that were aggravating her and upsetting her, it would have been all right. But because it's an ethnic minority, you can't say anything. And it really makes me angry. And I hope we find them, and I hope they prosecute them, and I hope they go to court for what they've done to that old lady. And I so admire her, I so admire her spirit, because for all these years, she says, you're not moving me. And I want to sit outside with about 50 people and sing, we shall not be moved, but, you know, you're not allowed to do that. And as regards this other thing, this corruption in the town, I've fought that for years, and it's labour corruption. And it's, and it's the right thing to do. Not because it's political, and this is what the BMP taught me, the right thing to do. And Margaret made me think when she said that she'd fought in the war. And this is, brought this photograph, this is 97 years old, this photograph. And it's my great uncle, Joe Horton. And he came out of the pit and he joined the Yorks and Lanks. And my granddad joined the Coilies, the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry, and they both fought together. He came out of the pit and he joined up at 18. He'd only been in France a few months and he got injured. And he came back and he was in hospital in Plymouth with another, little, another young lad at the side of him. And they said, you lads, you've done your bit now, you can go home. And this lad says, no, he says, if I can't fight, can I be a stretcher bearer? And the two of them went back as the stretcher bearers. And they'd only been in Eep a very short time, and they'd got a young lad on their stretcher, and they got grenaded, the three of them went. And he were 19 years and four months. And this lad is buried <coughs> just inside the Menning Gate in Eep, where he died. And my mum were riddled with cancer, she were 80. And she went, and this is a photograph of my mum at Eep just inside the Menning Gate where they paid the last post every night. And she stood at the end of his grave and she says, I've come to thank you, lad, for what you did when you come to fight. And that was one of the, what they call a bucket list, the things my mum wanted to do. And these lads fought and they died for this country. 
and they didn't fight for this country to be in the mess that it's in today. And that's why I fight, because all my family, all my family had the photographs on my grandma's sideboard. We were in the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, the Artillery. The women were in the munitions, in the Reich, Land Army. Only place we weren't were Wrens. Only one that we weren't in in our family. And he was the only one that we lost. And my gran used to cry, and I used to say, what's my gran crying for? Well, Uncle Joe's birthday today. Or it's the day Uncle Joe died, because that were her youngest brother. And I feel that if we don't fight for this country, for what they fought for, we failed them and it were all for nothing. All that suffering and all that death and all that poverty it were for nothing if we don't stand up and fight now. And when I go through my town and I see <coughs> foreigners taking what we've paid in and the traitors that have let them come in and do it and these people that are intimidating this old lady out of her house and the same lot that were interfering with our kids. It absolutely appalls me. And I'm getting on in years and I'm angry that time isn't on my side. And if we do get there, I won't be there. But you can stand on my bloody back and get there if you want. Because I'm so angry that, that kids going to school aren't taught what we were taught. We've got mosques going up all over. It's not my God. It's not my God. It's theirs. And we're letting them do it because we're standing and not saying anything and not doing anything. And I know it's hard because I've been, I've gone in to complain about things. I've gone to meetings and I've had two men, one under each arm, taking me out. And they talk to me as if I'm a lump of shit. And I think, who are you that you're not standing up for what's right and what's honest and what's decent and what's straight? And I'll keep on fighting and I keep, I'm going down to Bristol shortly and sometimes I get very tired and I'm, I've had enough that I think, well, there's nobody shooting at me like, like there were this lad. You know, there's, there's nobody. I'm not on a daily in trenches. I'm not. My granddad was gassed, and then he come and went down pit, and I watched him cough his lungs up for five or six years till he died, and I'm not suffering that. But I just want everybody to think, you know, what can you do in this fight that we've all got to fight? And as you know, I always finish anything I do. That's my trademark. I finish with poetry. It's a beautiful language, ours, and I like to play about with it. And this is one I've written, and it's called Clogs. From the pits and the mills down each working class street, we all went to grass with clogs on our feet. Now the mills have closed down and the mines have all gone, but the sound of those working class clogs lingers on. They've closed all the pits, and so we wouldn't forget the pit head gear in concrete they've set. They import coal from Poland and if we want to see them, the relics are shown in a mining museum. The clattering cotton mills employed folks by the score, but the looms and the people are not there anymore. They've all been turned into apartments for the rich and the bored. The working class folks in their clogs can't afford. The derelict steel works that stand all round this town show how it's the working class have been let down. If we don't work for peanuts until we drop dead, they'll bring in the immigrants to do it instead. <coughs> As mosques replace churches and traditions disappear, we who have faith, we have nothing to fear. We will rise in, we'll fight in each working class street, joined by the ghosts of the past with the clogs on their feet. Thank you. Marlene, we're all, we're blown away with what you achieved in the by-election with our best ever place in the in a parliamentary by-election uh, and the amount of work that Marlene did that you know a lady of just over 65 <laughs> should, should not be actually leafleting for eight nine hours a day but Marlene was and a few people were the thanks to those but thanks to Marlene but also what you've done more recently with the old lady who's been brutally harassed by some of Rotherham's in Richards has alternatively angered and inspired people of ours all over the country and beyond Britain. What you've done there is a tremendous thing. I hope it'll bear fruit and those bastards get prosecuted. I really do. Uh, but none of that would have happened without Marlene and so on. So if we can have that, Marlene, come up here. Because we've got a little something for you. Is it by money? Way of, is it no, money? it's not money. We spent the money. <laughs> but if you're hungry, you can oh, always you. boil them up. Or if the parrot won't stop talking, you can put one in the cage. There you go, some lovely flowers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.